Dear friends, today we are going to study about the SEM process. SEM is software configuration process. This includes controlling of change. SEM also means software change management. That is how we review, create versions and incorporate the changes. It includes the following SEM task. The first one is identification, then it is version control, then change control, configuration auditing and reporting. That means first we have to identify the change. Various controls of versions are being done. Then the change is being controlled. All the auditing is done or reporting of the audits is done. This is essential to carry out the software configuration management. Software process identification. To control and manage Software configuration items each must be separately named and then organized using object oriented approach. Two types of objects can be identified the basic object and aggregate objects. A basic object is a unit of text that has been created by the software engineer during the software development lifecycle. For example, a basic object might be a section of requirement specification, a source listing for a component, or a suite of test cases that are used to exercise the code. An aggregate object is collection of such basic objects. So basically, in identification, we are using object-oriented approach during the life cycle of the development project using basic objects and aggregate objects. Second phase is version control. While we are trying to think about various versions or various changes, different versions are being com created and combined. A version control combines procedures and tools to manage different versions of software configuration objects that are created during the software process. That means if there is a change, there is a new version created. All of these versions have to be evaluated and they have to be recorded properly. Version control is being represented using the evolution graph. Each node on the graph is an aggregate object that is a complete version of the software. Here there are three axes, namely entities, variants and versions. An entity is nothing but a software module. A variant is a change and on each object or module, a change will lead to a next version. Suppose there is an entity X upon a variant or change B, it creates a version X1. And after a second change, it creates a version X2. All of them have to be maintained. Change control. Change is inevitable. During the software development lifecycle, there can be change in requirements, change in technical feasibility, change in government policies, change in capital. So all of these changes will lead to change in the software development. So it combines human procedures and automated tools to provide a mechanism for control of change. This could be explained during Use this particular diagram. Need for change is recognized. The change is requested from the user. Developer evaluates. Change report is generated. The change control authority decides. That means first the need is recognized. Then a change request is generated by the user. The developer evaluates the request. The change report is generated and it has been forwarded to the change control authority. The change control authority decides whether the change has to be incorporated or it has to be rejected. If the authority decides to reject the change, if it finds it unsuitable or not important, the user is informed about it. But if the authority decides to incorporate the change, request is queued for action, individuals are assigned to configure objects, check out configuration objects, make the change, review the change, Check in the configuration items that have been changed. Establish a baseline for testing. Perform quality assurance and testing activities. Promote change for inclusion in next release. Rebuild appropriate version of software. Review the change to all the configuration items. Include the change in new version and distribute the version. That means the change has been implemented. It is reviewed. Several individuals are assigned to make that change. Quality assurance is being done. Testing activities are being carried. 
rebuilding of the appropriate versions is done changes incorporated completely and the new version is distributed to all stakeholders software configuration management process next stage configuration auditing once the identification version control and change control are done next stage is to audit the report it is important to ensure that the change has been properly implemented in order to make this implementation formal review and software configuration auditing is essential in formal technical review it is a peer to peer review as well as review among the teammates that means a individual will himself check his code then followed by the team discussion on the code in order to see whether all the changes have been properly implemented second way of doing it is software configuration audit this audit complements the formal technical review by assessing a software configuration object for characteristics that are generally not considered during the review the audit asks and answers the following questions that whether the change has been specified and the modifications have been incorporated as a formal technical review been conducted to assess the technical correctness has the software process been followed and have software engineering standards properly been applied the last stage is status reporting this is also called as configuration status reporting or status accounting this is a scm task that answers the following questions what happened who did it when did it happen and what else will be affected that means it keeps a track of what change was done who did the change when the change was done and what all things will be affected that is all about scm process thank you